anyways uh i i think so we have to start with chapter 10 today yep so yeah should i share a screen yep yeah please go ahead right okay today we will be discussing chapter 10 uh which is about on policy control with approximation. So last week we finished uh, talking about uh, on policy evaluation and uh, now we can switch to the control. And uh, as usual, uh, the uh, we will get uh, from evaluation to control fo following the uh, uh, our familiar pattern of this uh, using uh, generalized uh, policy iteration and uh, the algorithms uh, we are going to consider are still the same familiar variations of uh, uh, TD control like uh, SARSA and key learning and expected SARSA stuff like that. So uh, all of this uh, is still applicable to function approximation case, but we will have to introduce a couple of modifications and uh, let's consider those. So for the, let's first talk about episodic semi-gradient control. And in this case, we have the least uh, difference uh, compared to the tabular case. So uh, we can, uh, have a look at these uh, equations. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is very similar to what we had for the uh, update in the weight update in the evaluation case. But this time we are uh, using a semi gradient with respect to this Q function, which takes uh, into account the action as well as a state. And that is just uh, the same as we had for tabular case. Uh, basically, we just switch from uh, value function to action value function, from state value function to action value function. And we get from uh, the uh, policy evaluation to the control problem solution. And uh, you can see that equation uh, 10.1 gives us this kind of uh, generalized expression. And we need to uh, kind of express this uh, u sub t in a definite uh, way to get some particular algorithm and uh, for example the one step sarsa update uh, would be given in in this case we will uh, have our u uh, sub t value as uh, the reward at uh, t plus 1 uh, plus the discounted uh, estimated value, uh, action value at uh, st plus one given action at t plus one. So that is just the same as we had uh, for tabular case again, but this time instead of, uh, we just, we are using uh, the 
gradient of our parametric function instead of uh, updating the value itself as we had in tabular case. But uh, the essence of the method is very similar. And okay, so that way I would be called episodic semi-gradient one step SARSA. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that should be a very familiar uh, uh, because it's uh, essentially the same algorithm we had for tabular case with just uh, uh, minor changes needed to uh, generalized to function approximation. And as it's mentioned in a book, that uh, tabular case can be viewed as a particular uh, example of function approximation where we have like no generalization at all for our function, right? So again, we have this hyperparameters for the algorithm. Uh, so we have alpha, our learning rate, and uh, we have epsilon for our epsilon greedy policy. Uh, we have some uh, parametric value function parametrized with uh, W vector, and we will iterate. Uh, so here we have these two loops where first we iterate uh, like for each episode and we iterate for each time step in the episode. We select an action. We observe the, the results of that action, uh, which are the reward and a next state. And then we do the update and uh, the update is a bit different if the common state is uh, terminal. In that case, we will not uh, have uh, this factor in this in, in these brackets. So we don't have uh, kind of expected returns, but otherwise it's uh, the same uh, equation in this line and this line here. So, yeah, and then we just uh, iteratively select action uh, and uh, use, uh, it, as you remember in SARSA, we need to select an action from the next state to uh, get the update. And then we will uh, yeah, transition to the next state and uh, there we will apply this selected action and we do this iteratively and uh, yeah, that's uh, episodic semi-gradient SARSA for estimating action value function. And uh, now we can consider an example of uh, a problem we can, we can solve with this uh, method. So uh, the problem is as follows. We have a, a car in uh, this uh, mountain road and we want to go up the hill but uh, the car has not enough power to go straight to the top of the hill. Therefore, we need to do something uh, smart about that. Uh, essentially, we need to go backward uh, to get some uh, uh, extra inertia from this uh, previous hill to get to the top. And uh, here, the we can observe the evolution of uh, action value function or yeah that, that would be a value function we have for this uh, for this um, problem and uh, how it kind of develops through time 
Okay, and uh, yeah, in this case, we have uh, our state would be would contain two variables. It would be position and velocity, and uh, those are given uh, with these two formulas here. Uh, you see that we clamp both position and uh, velocity at some values. So our velocity cannot be uh, greater than uh, or, or less than uh, absolute value of negative of uh, 0.07. And the position is also bounded in some region. Okay, and uh, the target uh, state is this boundary uh, rightmost position. Okay, and we start with uh, in, a uh, in a somewhat randomized location here and uh, got to get to the goal, this goal state. And, and uh, to solve this problem, we can apply the SARSA algorithm, uh, semi gradient SARSA. And uh, yeah, again, we have uh, three possible actions here. So unlike in more kind of realistic uh, setting for, for this kind of problem where we could have kind of continuous action space, here we just considering a sim simplified uh, kind of disc discretized action space where we have only full uh, throttle forward, full throttle reverse, and zero throttle. So that that makes our problem a bit simpler in this case. And uh, the main component of this uh, function approximation, so our function uh, action value function, is given as follows. Uh, it it is just a linear. Uh, you can see that it's a simple linear uh, function uh, we are using here. And in this case, we have uh, some feature vector x uh, sub i, uh, which is uh, uh, conditioned on uh, state and action. And uh, we get these features using tile coding, as we, discuss we discussed it in uh, the previous chapter. And uh, just a brief reminder, we cover our actions uh, or state space uh, with uh, tiles. And we get, uh, and we have multiple tilings. Each tiling results in uh, a separate feature. And uh, those are kind of one hot uh, can be viewed as one hot encoded binary features uh, showing into which tiles uh, the region of uh, action uh, state space uh, state uh, kind of the state corresponds to which region in the state space and uh, we have uh, independent set uh, of features for each tiling. Uh, and uh, yeah, here we can select number of tilings. In this case, authors use eight tilings and they compare, uh, compare uh, the different learning rates for this task. And uh, yeah. There is, there is uh, software they uh, used for to generate the tiles for this problem, uh, because as, as it is mentioned in the previous chapter, the uh, tiling generation is uh, like you, you have a bunch of uh, choices there as well. But in general, uh, that's uh, the problem here. I haven't yet uh, implemented this. Uh, so maybe Mayank, you would like to share some code uh, relevant mm -hmm. to this example. Yep, I have a couple of graphs which I have recreated. 
Okay, you can share it so that we can compare the results from the book and what do we get? So this is the uh, step 428. Uh, go down to book example. This is the step in, uh, this is uh, the inertia that we are uh, building up here. The, uh, here the first episode is still not complete. But the mountain car with the cost to go function uh, is in its 428 step. That's the uh, simple, uh, how do I say it, the position versus uh, uh, velocity graph that we can see as it is uh, firstly building up the in inertia to reach this goal state. And then for this graph, which uh, this is a step uh, 428, as I've just alluded to. And this shows the uh, learning curve for the semi gradient salsa on, on this problem, the various step sizes. And here we have. Steps per episode with a log scale of this, this guy here. And it's similar in uh, much, in many respects to the alpha values of point 0.1. Uh, the blue line is the top, top one. The Orange line is the middle one, and the green line is the uh, third, third one. And we can see uh, the point 0.1 by 8, point 0.2 by 8, and uh, point 0.5 by 8. The colors have been changed, but the uh, result is exactly the same as we have hoped for. Uh, and then since it shows the steps per episodes over log scale, that is average over 100. Uh, this is the same uh, representation that I came across. Then for, I have uh, reproduced 10.3 and 10.4, we will uh, allude to it when we get there. So. Yep, you can take it from here. All right, so again, it's uh, important to notice here is that in this uh, problem, we have a negative uh, one reward for each time step uh, until uh, the car reaches the uh, goal, the terminal state, and uh, therefore uh, actual uh, state values are negative, and uh, the initialization, which is zero in this case, is an optimistic initialization, and uh, that uh, uh, encourages exploration. Uh, because each uh, new state is has, uh, uh, or each unexplored state has a, a higher value compared to the explored state. And therefore we are just uh, uh, oscillating uh, in this uh, uh, region to trying to uh, 
uh, train all the combinations of velocity at each position and eventually we will find this uh, way to the uh, top but uh, it takes uh, quite a lot of time uh, to find it so quite a lot of time steps because uh, like initially it's uh, not at all obvious uh, what what is good in this environment to the agent from the reward signal until uh, the uh, goal is reached. All right, and uh, we can consider now a semi gradient and step SARSA. Uh, that would be an extension uh, to uh, the one step. Uh, SARSA we viewed before. Uh, and uh, again, this is uh, uh, mostly equivalent to the tabular case. Uh, once again, we define uh, the expected returns for time uh, span from T to T plus N as uh, sum of the discounted uh, returns at these time steps and and again we add the discounted uh, estimate of the value action uh, action value of the final state at t plus n okay and uh, then we will uh, use this expected uh, uh, returns uh, and step returns in our formula 10.1. Uh, 10 10 uh, once we substitute it, we get this formulation here. And uh, the algorithm should be, should be modified. So it becomes a bit more uh, complicated, but uh, uh, the complication uh, is, is this is not something new, this just comes from uh, the necessity to store uh, the reward values uh, for each uh, n time steps we are, we are uh, using to, for our n-step bootstrapping procedure. And uh, we need to modify the, our, our uh, loop accordingly and to do the update here for the, uh, this time step tau when we reach, uh, when we do like uh, at least n steps. And th then we can uh, do this update. So we accumulate this uh, value here, uh, or not accumulate, we sum the value here to have the expected returns. And then we do the same kind of update as for uh, the one step SARSA, but here. Uh, what we do is uh, uh, we we just use the expected returns for n step uh, n steps rather than one step, but uh, the idea is again uh, very similar. Okay, and uh, we can uh, see how. Uh, different values for n compare, you uh, can observe that uh, uh, some bootstrapping is uh, usually better than uh, uh, no bootstrapping, but uh, uh, you can see here that a learning rate should be decreased a bit for higher uh, number of boot bootstrapping steps, but the uh, resulting performance is improved in this case. And uh, we can compare different values uh, for number of bootstrapping steps. And in this case, uh, some, uh, 
smallish but uh, not greater than one uh, value here it, it, it equals to four uh, performs best in this case okay so we can now probably discuss as uh, related questions here uh, so uh, first question uh, we did not uh, considered uh, absurd code for Monte Carlo method in this chapter and uh, what would it be like and uh, why is it not reasonable to give this pseudocode? Uh, and uh, probably uh, the problem here with Monte Carlo method is uh, that to, uh, as you remember, in Monte Carlo approach, we need uh, to complete at least one episode to update before we update any uh, before we are update our action uh, uh, value function right so our action value function will not be updated until the end of the episode but because uh, we uh, do not uh, we do not have uh, any so it is extremely unlikely that we will uh, complete even a single episode given the, uh, that we act randomly in this environment, but uh, uh, we cannot do anything better than random because we don't have any updates to our val action value function until we uh, complete a single episode to get some uh, to get to get to get something to learn for to learn our action value function from, so that's my interpretation of this uh, question. And please uh, add your opinions on that if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. It's... So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, it's. Uh, reasonable to not expect any Monte Carlo methods here um, due to that, and a uh, plus the number of comp computation steps that will be involved uh, will be high uh, because it will have to wait for I, I think so a minimum of one episode to get an update. Um, which is also an extreme variation. So it, it will be much more difficult to uh, practically get the uh, state action values there uh, to update your next given state. So yeah, uh, that's the reason, I, I, I think so. Yeah, so th this... Uh, uh problem demonstrates how uh, TD method, methods, uh, TD learning is, uh, can be uh, extremely beneficial compared to Monte Carlo uh, approach. Even though in the previous chapter, we considered some uh, uh, like, uh, limitations of uh, TD methods uh, for function approximation with respect to the convergence uh, guarantees and, uh, the, uh, and the error to which it converges. But uh, we can see that on, in practice, uh, it's, it might be extremely difficult to apply Monte Carlo approach for, for this uh, kind of problems and uh, because uh, temporal difference learning updates its, its estimates during the episode, uh, we can have uh, like a lot of benefit in this case. But uh, yeah, in, in Monte Carlo, 
uh, we we will just get uh, a tons of uh, like not very valuable experience uh, due after even if we complete the single episode by random chance. Okay, so uh, the next question would be give a pseudo code for semi gradient one step expected sarsa. Uh, and uh, as you remember, uh, the only difference uh, of uh, let's get to the uh, regular uh, sarsa algorithm and uh, try to think. Uh, how should it be changed uh, to get to expected SARSA? And as you remember, the difference was that in uh, case of uh, uh, SARSA, we are using we use a sample sampled action for our update here. But in expected SARSA, we should take an uh, expected value of uh, our action value function uh, for this factor in the in this expression and uh, that would be so we need to take a, an expectation over all possible actions in this case we have only three actions so we can compute a sum over th those three actions uh, for uh, of this function, right? So we will uh, evaluate uh, this uh, q hat three times in this case to get three values, and then we will weight those uh, by by their probability of action, probabilities of action, and sum the, sum those together to get this uh, component of our update uh, and. Uh, what I was thinking about, uh, how does this uh, work in case of continuous actions? So you can imagine that instead of having like three discrete actions, we can have a, a, a full range from negative one uh, to one, for example, for our throttle. And in that case, we should to, to apply expected SARSA, we should compute an integral, right, to get the expectation. So we need to integrate uh, this function uh, in this bounds. Uh, and uh, the, also we need to include the uh, functions that give us the probabilities of actions, uh, probability distribution of actions. So I'm not sure how feasible is that in uh, different scenarios. I don't know if anyone has uh, uh, some kind of idea how does how would it work for continuous action space. For but, continuous action space, I think we need. Uh, It just occurs to me that uh, this uh, expected SARSA can get uh, like extremely computationally expensive if we have a continuous action space. So we need uh, to have a way to easily integrate our function. And maybe we can find some closed form solution for that. And in that case, it might be feasible, right? So if yep. we can uh, get our closed form solution for an integral here and we have, uh, so what our probability of action, uh, probability distribution function for action would be. So it, it should, uh, it, it should, be, it will be kind of simple probably because we are trying to use some kind of, uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure what, an analog of epsilon greedy strategy for continuous action space would be okay. That, that just, I think I just think it would be interesting to see how would that work. But okay, let's move on. We are 
dealing with this um, discrete action space for now. And uh, yeah, on, on the other hand, any continuous action space can be represented as some kind uh, like discretized and uh, dealt in that way at least. Yeah, but sometimes uh, in, in some problems, it's much more useful to think about actions as a continuous continuum. And uh, uh, maybe some algorithms are not so easy to apply in that case, I guess. Mm. I, I think so. In that case, the TD with, with uh, some steps will, will be the best with some somewhat of uh, sampling procedure uh, required to replace this uh, term um, that we had. So, um, yeah, I guess so. Just computing expectation wouldn't wouldn't be so easy. But sampling, uh, so basically, standard SARSA relies on sampling an action, and that mm -hmm. should work fine. And Q learning, I guess, as well, right? Because in Q learning, we are using uh, uh, the best action according to our uh, current policy. Uh, and uh, that would be sampling as well, right? So we, we, we have a concrete action instead of trying to evaluate the expectation. So that should be easier, but sure. for, for expectations, it might, it, might, it might get a bit uh, more computer ex extensive and maybe more tricky. Right, and the final question uh, in the, for this section, why do the results in figure 10.4 have higher standard errors at large n and than in small n? So that's interesting. You can see that uh, there is a bunch of uh, kind of, mm -hmm. uh, the higher n, the more bumpy this gets. And that means we have higher variance here and uh, yeah, probably yeah, it's, because, yeah, go on. No, it's due to the variance. I think so. When we have the n as the higher number, then uh, those continuous actions uh, that have been taken require some sort of a history that has uh, more uh, variance of filled history as compared to the uh, n with. Uh, lower number. So uh, that might be one reason. Yeah, I guess. And also, uh, I think we are using um, this uh, semi-gradient. So we, we don't have a true gradient for our function, right? And we are trying to uh, bootstrap using the uh, value of our using our value of our function right and the more uh, the higher n is the more uh, times like uh, uh, the, the more of this recursive relation we have I guess maybe that can introduce more variance into the results right mm -hmm. so because in this case kind of all, all the uh, values we are bootstrapping from are tied to the values we are updating at each time step. So that can kind of be, co be causing some variance, but that's also kind of speculative. Okay, so we uh, have discussed this episodic uh, uh, solving the uh, episodic task in this case. And uh, uh, let's uh, uh, now uh, try to approach the continuing tasks. And for continuing tasks, uh, it turns out it's not so, so simple to switch uh, uh, to function approximation to, to apply our uh, to tools we developed in previous chapters, we need to actually introduce a new form problem formulation. So uh, before uh, we had 
two uh, problem formulation here, e episodic and discounted. So uh, in episodic task uh, and uh, both of these formulations are used to uh, kind of, so we, we need uh, our values to converge to something. And uh, for example, in where, when we have this episodic task, we can uh, uh, design our reward function in a way that, uh, you know, it uh, uh, has some terminal reward. And uh, therefore we can, uh, uh, so our uh, value function converges to some uh, stable values, or we can uh, could apply discounting in the continuum case. And that also allow, uh, allowed us to converge. Uh, and there is an alternative approach, uh, which is called average reward approach. And uh, it, it is uh, just the third uh, kind of uh, equivalently uh, important and uh, useful formulation of uh, reinforcement learning uh, problem. So let's see what uh, does it mean. We want to uh, get, uh, we want to formulate our uh, returns in terms of, uh, or express our returns in terms of average reward. And uh, we need to uh, compute this value R of pi, which would be the average reward associated with our policy pi here. And that would be an expectation of uh, the returns uh, for time steps starting from the first uh, up to infinity, uh, normalized by the number of time steps here. You can see that our uh, value t ranges from one to h and we normalize by h so we divide by h this value so that would uh, make it average right uh, and uh, the we take a limit of uh, of this expression as h uh, approaches and in infinity okay so uh, that is how we get the average reward. And this can be rewritten uh, in a, a different, uh, so we have this three kind of equivalent expressions, right? We can express it as a sum, or we can exp uh, write it as an expectation in the limit, right? or we can write it, uh, we can just unroll all this uh, limit as uh, this multiplication uh, over three uh, su summations, right? So we have here reward uh, with our transition probabilities, right? And we sum over all the states, uh, possible states, uh, future states and rewards. Uh, then we, multiplied by the probability for our actions given by our policy for current state. And then we multiplied by this third component, which is uh, the steady state distribution. And we will need to look uh, a bit closer. What does it mean? So this formulation will, uh, uh, works in the case when we have this ergodic process, which means that it converges to uh, some steady state distribution. And uh, here, here uh, maybe it is easier to understand it in a formula. Uh, so you can see we have this uh, st state, uh, steady state distribution mu sub pi under current policy pi. Uh, and uh, we sum it, sum it over all states and we multiply it by the, right, our uh, transition probabilities times uh, uh, action probabilities and we sum over all actions. And that should be equal to the, 
so it it should be uh, the same as uh, in the next state. Okay, and uh, so that would make our uh, so. Uh, that, that means that uh, there is some uh, steady, steady state distribution which is independent of our initial conditions. So it is, it is independent of, of uh, initial state we start in. We uh, will eventually converge to some... Uh, uh, so the, the probability of uh, being its uh, state uh, at some state in the limit will be uh, given some uh, uh, actions defined by our policy uh, will be steady and independent of the initial state we, we start in. And that would make our Markov decision uh, process ergodic. Okay. And uh, okay. yeah. I, I I had a comment here with respect to ergodicity. Ergodicity is here with the acyclic uh, or the asynchronous nature of, uh, sorry, not the asynchronous, but uh, the uh, random nature of uh, uh, the physics. I, I, I think so. I am trying to say that Ergodicity here refers to the same property that like a uh, metal, uh, a piece of metal that is uh, heated at one end will eventually have the same temperature throughout. So uh, I think so that's the same property that is being applied here with respect to on the MDPs. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. So that me just means that we converge to some steady state distribution uh, given. So in, in this uh, MDP case, right? So we have some policy and under that policy, we have some uh, steady state uh, distribution of probabilities of states, which is independent of, uh, of the state we start at, right? So... Uh, when we follow our policy, we will have uh, this uh, like infinitely long, we, we will reach this steady state distribution. And uh, yeah, so I think that uh, kind of... Mm, yep, yep. In, in uh, other words, this will reach some kind of equilibrium, which is yeah. here defined as a steady state distribution. Yeah, yeah, I think this physics analogy is uh, totally sound. So, yeah, the, this equilibrium idea is uh, is correct indeed. Okay, and uh, so I think that we can apply this average reward uh, formulation in only in that case when we have this ergodic. Uh, process and uh, it cannot be applied to the uh, to the process will uh, which is not ergodic so because we will not converge there and uh, it, further in this chapter we will encounter some kind of examples and probably will have a better intuition about it okay now uh, that we have uh, uh, this uh, average rewards we can uh, formulate our our uh, expected returns in terms of average rewards. So that would be, you can see that uh, the average reward for t time steps would be a sum of all the rewards we uh, observed starting from that uh, time plus uh, or, or minus the, so for, from each actual reward, we subtract this average reward. And uh, that would be our expected re return st starting from that uh, time step, right? 
Okay, so that's uh, uh, with uh, all those ergodicity and limits and stuff, it's might, it might look a bit kind of confusing maybe, but the underlying idea, I guess, is uh, uh, simple. So we, we now uh, want to for formulate, we just ha have this uh, average reward as associated with our policy and uh, we subtract it uh, from our actual reward uh, to, to get some, uh, to converge to some values. Okay, so yeah, and uh, if the process is not ergodic, probably the uh, average reward wouldn't be, so this limit wouldn't be defined, right? And uh, the, as a, or therefore the sum wouldn't be defined and it, it will be difficult to get this value or uh, in, in some cases we, we won't have an average reward because our, our reward does not uh, get to come to some steady state distribution, right? And you cannot uh, take an average of non-convergent non uh, Serious, right? Like in mass, if your series uh, like diverges, you cannot compute the the average of it. Okay, so now uh, we can uh, get a new uh, like bunch of uh, uh, Bellman equations uh, associated with the average award formulation. And uh, yeah, but uh, the essence is uh, the same as before, but uh, this time uh, we have this R of pi average value, reward value, and we use it as our estimate uh, for the return. So now we, we sum over all, so to get the value of our policy, we sum over all actions, uh, or we, we take our action probability, sum over all, action, all actions, and we sum uh, here our transition function, we sum over all the rewards and uh, possible future states, and uh, uh, we take this uh, a reward associated with, with uh, certain transition minus average reward plus the expected uh, uh, what we expect to get from the next state. Okay, and uh, uh, these uh, differential value functions uh, these are based on the Bellman equations here, or yeah, yeah. So okay. this this is just a rewriting. Uh, of uh, Bellman equations. So here, I think differential value function also have Bellman equations, just slightly different from those we have seen earlier. So the Bellman equation is just uh, a expression of our value or actually like state value or action value function uh, in terms of this sums, right? Based on transition probabilities and uh, action probabilities and uh, and uh, value function itself. And uh, yeah, so we, in this way, we recursively uh, define uh, our value of current state in terms of value of uh, the next state and uh, our policy uh, and transition probabilities. And uh, we can do it using this average reward formulation as given by these formulas. And uh, the idea is uh, uh, the same. We need to express uh, this uh, value of a state recursively in terms of this, uh, of, of value of future state. Uh, conditioned by car on current state and uh, given this Basically, we have this environment which defines the transition probabilities, and we have some policy which defines our action probabilities. So that would be an Bellman equation for uh, state value function and action value function. 
and uh, the same uh, applies to the optimal uh, value function, state value function, and action value function. So, okay. Any comments or questions in this regards? The optimal values are obtained by uh, like maximizing, uh, take, taking a maximum over, over our uh, policy, right? But uh, otherwise it's uh, the same as uh, this one, but this time we, we just maximize over uh, our policy rather than uh, sum over all possible actions. Okay, and now the, uh, we can also give a differential form of TD error as follows. Uh, so we subtract this uh, R bar uh, from uh, the reverted current uh, state uh, time step and uh, we add this uh, value for the future state, next state. And uh, to get the uh, TD error, we subtract our previous estimate, right? So this, this is uh, our estimate before observation. And we get the observation at uh, R t, uh, t sub t plus one. And we, that would be our temporal difference error. And uh, the same uh, for action value function. So here we have for state value function and uh, for action uh, ex expressed through action value function. And uh, this R bar is an uh, estimate of our average reward at uh, time t because uh, we need it. We need it because we try. We are trying to estimate. Uh, our average return. We don't know it beforehand, right? So we are uh, estimating it just as well as we are trying to estimate our uh, value function. We are trying to estimate the average reward and we update it with our experiences uh, during the learning process. And then the uh, weight update uh, will can be expressed uh, using this uh, TD error, and uh, again the same formula, but uh, we have uh, a, a a different uh, uh, expression uh, for that uh, to to multiply our gradient with, uh, which corresponds corresponds to our uh, error, right? But uh, yeah, the, the update remains the same. Uh, the idea of update remains the same, but uh, we, uh, we have a new value for our estimate of expected returns in this case, and uh, therefore a new value for our TD error. Okay, so uh, now maybe to make sure that this is clear. Let's have a look at uh, first at differential semi gradient SARSA algorithm. So uh, it's uh, similar to what we have for episodic case, but there are some differences. Uh, notice this time we have two um, uh, step size parameters, alpha and beta, right? And uh, a new value we are going to learn uh, during our uh, process, uh, uh, this R bar. Again, we start in, at some state and do some action and we, uh, uh, and then we look through the, uh, through the time steps. Uh, we take in the action, uh, observe the results of that action. Uh, then we select 
the next action, which is necessary for SARSA algorithm. Uh, and uh, then we compute our uh, TD error associated with uh, this uh, time step. So we use uh, this actual observe, observed return, uh, reward uh, minus uh, our estimate of the average return, uh, reward uh, plus uh, the action value uh, we expect to for the next as next state and action, and uh, we subtract our current estimate of the action value for the, for this state and action. That gives us a TD error. Then we update our uh, expected. Uh, so our this uh, reward R bar. Uh, using learning uh, rate beta. So we just add uh, this TD error our, to the R bar. And then we update our weights uh, using uh, the same TD error multiplied by the learning rate alpha and a gradient of our uh, action value function. And uh, yeah, so that, that process continues in a loop. Okay, and uh, let's have a look at the exercises again. So uh, a pseudocode for a differential version of semi-gradient Q-learning. As you remember in Q-learning, instead of using a sampled action, we use a greedy action in this place here. So our TD error will be changed uh, in a way that uh, this time uh, instead of uh, using uh, instead of using this uh, sampled action for update, we use our greedy action here. And uh, otherwise I think it will uh, be the same, right? Yep. Okay, so that I think that should be uh, clear. And uh, uh, what equations are needed to be on 10.10 .10 to specify the differential version of TD0? So 10.10 .10 was an expression for uh, this uh, value and to, to specify TD0, we would also need the update equation. Yep, the update equation of uh, the value of the weights with the weight. Yeah, so for, for a, value, a state value function, right? Mm -hmm instead of action value function like here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, now let's consider this uh, example here. So uh, we are uh, discussing the marker decision process uh, and under any policy, it, it produces a deterministic uh, sequence of rewards. Uh, so we have alternating uh, a positive one reward and zero reward. And this uh, continues forever. So uh, you, you can see that this is not an ergodic process. So it never kind of converges to some value. So there, there is no this uh, stationary distribution mu sub pi in this case. But uh, the average reward is well-defined uh, so I think it is uh, can, should be kind of obvious that the average reward here is uh, 0.5, right? So we have alternating uh, positive one and zero rewards. And uh, if you kind of take uh, uh, a limit of this uh, of this sequence, you will have a uh, 0.5. So it uh, yeah, I think 
that should be kind of obvious. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, uh, yeah, so uh, I think that answers this question. Now let's consider two states in this Markov decision process. So we can start at state A and B and uh, the sequence is the same, but when we start in at state A, we start uh, from positive one. And we, uh, in case of state B, we start with zero. So uh, we want to compute uh, differential values of these states. And uh, the equation uh, 10.9, which is here, uh, doesn't uh, work in this case. Again, this uh, uh, we, we will not have a, a concrete value here, right, for this expression because we have an alternating sum and with each t- time step we add either a one or uh, zero. So it does not converge to some uh, uh, concrete value. But uh, what we can do to work with it, uh, we can uh, take a limit of this uh, expression uh, that we had uh, for uh, the value uh, by um, taking, uh, taking the limit under gamma approaches one, right? and uh, uh, making it a kind of discounted formulation, but uh, making the, uh, evaluating the limit under, uh, when, when gamma approach, uh, approaches to one. And uh, in this way, we can compute the value for, uh, for each state. And uh, to do that, uh, what we need uh, uh, is to rewrite, uh, kind of open these brackets of, we can write the expectation here as a sum. Maybe I can try to write it down, I guess. So we will have, uh, in this case, we will have an, uh, this expression, uh, expectation of a reward uh, minus uh, the uh, average reward. So our average reward is, uh, negative 0.5. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not sure if writing here would <laughs> work great, but let's uh, try it for now. And uh, we will have uh, kind of uh, alternating series here we, when we have either one or uh, uh, or uh, zero. And all that uh, multiplied by uh, uh, this gamma to the power uh, t. And uh, that can be written as, uh, yeah, 0. 0.5 multiplied by, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I think uh, writing here with the mouse doesn't work great. So I, I may be, uh, I don't know, either uh, can uh, yep, I do so, discuss it or I, maybe post a solution. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I think so. I can share the screen too. Oh, great. OK, right. Let's do it. So. Yeah. I, I think so. This is the solution that you are looking for. Oh, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, here we, you, you can see that we write it as a sum here. So this expectation becomes a sum of alternating series. And we have this. So here they write it as a division by two, right? Uh, or that would be our. 0.5 that comes from our uh, subtracting our average reward, which is uh, 0.5. And uh, then we have this geometric series. And uh, yeah, so uh, you know that uh, geometric series converges. I don't know. Uh, 
it's actually I, I'm not sure if it's necessary to have this uh, intermediate step. Uh, it's kind of basic algebra that uh, when uh, gamma is or our value here, the absolute value of uh, uh, of uh, this uh, value is less than uh, one, then our geometric series would converge to one divided by one uh, minus x or in, in, in our case, the x would be negative gamma. So we have plus here, right? So that, that just comes from, the, this is closed form solution for the sum of, of a geometric series. And uh, we still have this uh, one half here. And uh, then we substitute, then we take a limit of this expression and it is, Obvious, we just substitute one for gamma and we have one half multiplied by one half and that is uh, uh, one quarter. Cool. And uh, the another, uh, in, in other case, what we will have, uh, so here uh, the author of the solution takes out gamma from the brackets, but I think actually what even uh, would be simpler, we can just take a uh, negative one from the brackets and that would uh, give us the same solution, but we can, we kind of consider the sum here, not from zero, to, but from one and we take the negative one, uh, like we, we will have uh, a T plus one in here in this power uh, beside uh, in, in power uh, with negative one, we take the negative one, uh, one negative out out and we get the same uh, the same expression, but uh, with minus before it. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, so the solution is a negative quarter, and uh, yeah, so uh, kind of for 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 very uh, for this alternating uh, reward sequence, uh, we have uh, two values for our possible states. Uh, like plus one, uh, uh, one quarter, if we start with positive reward and the negative one quarter, uh, if we start with zero reward. And uh, yeah, all the states are equivalent in this case. So that, those are two values we have for possible different states in this uh, Markov decision process, A and B. Yeah. yeah, so that, uh, I, I think this uh, is nice because uh, this exercise also should give us a nice uh, kind of uh, practical uh, feeling of what this ergodicity is and what does it mean uh, for our problem, right? And uh, also uh, how, how can we kind of, why do we need this, uh, discounting factor uh, in some cases when we have, yeah, wh why we uh, introduced it in the first place in the previous uh, section of the book, right? So we, we wanted to uh, get some kind of convergence. And uh, here again, we can use uh, kind of uh, some uh, extremely small uh, decay factor uh, or discounting just to get the solution for this, uh, uh, to evaluate the value of a state in this problem. So that that was pretty cool example, I guess. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, next exercise uh, is, uh, uh, we have a different uh, Markov reward process in this case. We have three states and uh, we have uh, a positive one uh, reward uh, when we arrive at state A and uh, the rewards are zero, zero for uh, arrival at other two states. And uh, uh, transitions are deterministically in a, in a we kind of goes this circle recircle this restates uh, deterministically, and uh, 
again, we need to compute the differential differential values for these three states. And uh, in uh, in this case, we will need again uh, to substitute uh, the poss possible uh, uh, values into this formula. So here, uh, yeah, you can see the solution here. Uh, again, we use the same uh, expression for our value of, uh, of a state. Uh, and uh, then we can uh, uh, substitute uh, this. Uh, our uh, average reward would be uh, one third, right? So we have uh, three uh, possible states and uh, uh, zero in two cases and one in uh, another case. And uh, yeah, so, so that would be, again, this alternating series, but this time we have, uh, we have two zeros instead of one, but uh, you can see the similarity with the previous example, right? So we have uh, plus one, zero, zero, plus one, zero, zero, and so on forever in circle. And uh, in this case, uh, we will, uh, as you can see here, so when we consider, the state A, uh, what uh, the returns will we get? So we are trying to sum again uh, for uh, times uh, ta for infinite time, right? And uh, in the, in this case, uh, we will have uh, like zero minus uh, one quarter multiplied by the discounting, uh, and uh, in this uh, case. Uh, it's uh, uh, three uh, to uh, hama to the three uh, time power uh, three times t, right? Then we have uh, we apply discounting one more time, and we have the same reward, right? It's zero minus one third times this gamma, and then we have uh, one minus one third uh, times this gamma, and we discount it two more times as compared to the previous case, right? So therefore we have like here, it would be gamma to the power zero times uh, plus uh, 3t, uh, gamma to the power one plus 3t, and gamma to the power two plus 3t. And uh, uh, we again uh, take this uh, uh, Geometric series, right? Uh, we use the same uh, again, the same uh, closed uh, form solution for a geometric series, and uh, uh, that uh, that is uh, for our uh, gammas less uh, than one, right? So we have this limit uh, when gamma approaches to one, but it is less than one. Therefore, our geometric series converges to this value. And uh, now, yeah, so this expression can be evaluated and it gives us uh, neg negative one third. And the same logic uh, is applicable to other states. Again, we need to uh, kind of uh, substitute these values here. And uh, yeah, so the difference would be uh, where, where we have this, uh, how, how many times do we discount each of the value to evaluate this? Uh, value for a particular state. And uh, depending on that, we have uh, negative one third, zero here, and uh, I don't know what, what would be the other value it would be, uh, I guess. So our, our hmm. yeah, it's, it sh should be, yeah. So here it's one third, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Okay, so that's, that's one third, nice. So, yeah, and again, the pro this process is not ergodic. Therefore, we need to uh, we needed to compute this limit uh, when gamma approaches uh, to one instead of uh, uh, computing directly uh, as using the formula in the book, uh, like ten point nine yeah. or whatever. Yep. Uh then for the 10.8, I, I think so they are asking for the sequence of RT minus RT bar, uh, errors being 
uh, this is the average reports that they have subtracted because they say that the answer of the steering states from this exercise is 1.3. This should tend towards the true value of 1.3, uh, 1 by 3, sorry. And what would be the sequence of uh, del t errors by using the equation 10 dot 10 and which error sequence would produce a more stable estimate of the average report if the estimate were allowed to change in response to the errors and why so i think so the first answer will be kind of like the same here as they have repeated uh this this pattern uh, 2 by 3, minus 1 by 3, and minus 1 by 3, they will be repeating the same same pattern here. Um, in the next query, by the equation 10.10, 10, if we apply this, this guy here, so this this will only give us the value the value uh, updates to uh, uh, and yeah I think so sequence of this why are they scripting it By three plus zero minus two by three. I did not understand this question, the second one. Sequence of this where does it lie? Okay, let's uh, have a look at uh, equation 10.10 .10 and uh, Try to figure out uh, what uh, do we need okay. here. Oh, so uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, so they just uh, uh, suggest we use uh, hmm, the in, in, instead of using uh, this uh, full expression STD error. We can. They suggest we use on. Uh, only the difference between the rewards, right? And uh, the, uh, our estimate of average reward. So that's what we need to do in this uh, exercise, right? Yeah, so they say, uh, what if we simply use this difference instead of... Mm -hmm. And yeah, so uh, that would kind of... It seems to me that, uh, yeah, so what, what the difference would be? Uh, oh, so uh, we, we just, uh, instead we use the updated version of uh, the uh, reward, right? And uh, let's have a look at, uh, so we, in, in this case, uh, uh, we can uh, go to the algorithm maybe and uh, we will see the difference, I think, clearly. Uh, so in the algorithm, uh, in, in, yeah, in here, you can see when you, when you update the R bar, we are using the, the arrow here. And we, we can kind of express the error in terms of uh, uh, what, uh, of, of its update, right? So uh, the error already uh, in, includes uh, this, uh, so we compute uh, this, uh, yeah, so the uh, delta here, uh, we have computed it, used it to update the R bar value, and they uh, then they suggest instead of using uh, the, uh, for, for, for TD update here, instead of using Delta, what if we use 
just the difference between R and updated R bar, right? So by re, re expressing it, uh, we could get, so now we are using, uh, for, for update, we are using this delta here, but uh, mm -hmm. what, what they suggest uh, that, uh, what, what would, so, or what they ask, what would happen if we, are, we would use uh, R minus uh, this updated R bar? and uh, how different are those two. And uh, actually you can kind of express this uh, delta back from here and get the, the difference what, uh, that, we, that will result from that update, mm -hmm. right? So uh, now uh, let's just uh, try to See, see the difference. So uh, before we was we were using de delta. Now we are uh, using uh, inst what we are using instead. Uh, we kind of add back or subtract. How how would uh, how yeah? So the the r's will kind of cancel out here because we use it twice, right? And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, one needs to write it up to just uh, you know see the difference mm -hmm, in this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, this formulation. This, yeah, this is pretty straightforward if you think from that perspective, and this makes sense too. Yeah, but uh, I will stop my share. Uh, you can take it from here, Arthur. Okay, uh, let me now share the screen with the book. And um, uh, so now we have another example to consider. And uh, yeah, this time we are uh, uh, dealing with this uh, 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 access controls uh, uh, task and we control, uh, we have 10 servers and we have uh, a clients with different priorities. Uh, we uh, put them in a queue and we need to decide uh, if we uh, uh, can just serve the client or reject it. And uh, depending, uh, so uh, what is tricky here, we want to maximize our reward and the reward is uh, proportional to the priority of the client. And uh, to make this, uh, to maximize the reward, we might need to re reject uh, some uh, of lower priority clients. And uh, here you can see the uh, decision. Uh, uh, so the policy learned by this uh, action well function. And, and this, in this case, you can see that we used the tabular uh, formulation of a problem, right? But uh, as, a tabular formulation is uh, just uh, a case of a function approximation when, when we have no generalization between states. Uh, we can uh, again apply the same differential uh, uh, formulation with uh, semi gradient uh, uh, updates, right? And uh, the, so these values were ob obtained uh, using this differential. Uh, formulation with semi gradient updates and uh, uh, depending of, on the yeah so we have here the differential uh, value of best action right and uh, depending of on number of servers and uh, so for uh, for the highest priority, the best action is always accept, right? And uh, the, that makes sense, right? So you always want to accept the highest priority uh, client. And the second highest priority client is also accepted almost always, except when we have on, only one free server, then it turns out uh, to be better to wait for uh, to wait for a high priority client. And uh, we reject more of the 
uh, third best priority and the least priority clients are rejected even more often. And uh, the differential, differential values in this case, you can see that we have kind of zero, uh, those, uh, the zero line here. And uh, you see that uh, when the number of free servers is low, uh, we have negative a differential uh, value. So the value of, of these states, all of all the states with uh, low number of free servers uh, is lower than the average uh, state value. And that makes sense, right? And uh, uh, so here we have uh, like uh, higher value in this region when we have more free servers and probably we just don't have uh, any uh, observations here. So these values are never updated. Therefore, we have this drop here because obviously the, when we have a lot of free servers, the values should be highest, right? But we have this drop to zero here and that is probably because uh, uh, not because we have some mysterious uh, problem with having a lot of free servers, but because we just did not uh, get into this kind of situations a lot during the learning process, because most of the time, because of the environment dynamics, uh, we don't have uh, these situations often when we have uh, like probably we not, never had the situation when we had 10 or nine free servers du during learning. And uh, therefore uh, we observe this drop here. So that, that's uh, an explanation uh, suggested by the authors of the book. And uh, I think it makes intuitive sense because uh, yeah, obviously when you have uh, most of the free servers free, uh, you should have uh, all the value because uh, uh, for, for, for those states, because you can accept whoever comes and uh, you, you will be fine with that. Yeah, so, and uh, any questions about or comments regarding this example here? And if no, uh, we move to the, uh, to this, uh, uh, to discuss this uh, situation that we uh, now don't really need the discounted formulation for the function approximation case because uh, uh, it uh, does not introduce uh, anything new when we have the average reward formulation. Uh, and uh, the intuition behind this uh, it kind of is as follows. Uh, the average discounted returns uh, returns is proportional to average reward. And uh, the average discounted returns uh, will be always uh, uh, related to the Average uh, average reward uh, by this factor one uh, minus uh, div divided uh, by one minus gamma. So uh, and uh, for discounting we select this as a constant, right? And uh, uh, so th that value would would be just a proportional uh, to undiscounted average reward and. Uh, uh, here it's claimed that the ordering of the policies will be the same under uh, discounted and undiscounted case. And uh, yeah, so uh, whatever value we set uh, for gamma, we will have the same ranking for the uh, policies. And that, that is why the discounted case does not introduce anything 
use uh, kind of new to this uh, problem problem formulation for continuing case, and uh, that is why that is why uh, we can kind of deprecate the discounted formulation for function approximation, but um, and here we, uh, we have this proof uh, that it uh, uh, that it uh, it is uh, kind of can can be formulated. Uh, uh, so we we can uh, get from here to here uh, and have this uh, constant. Uh, uh, or uh, yeah, like mul multiplicative offset, and uh, uh, the discounting rate does not then influence the ordering, and uh, yeah. Uh, also, an important point uh, here uh, mentioned here that essentially, when using the function approximation. Uh, we have lost the uh, policy improvement theorem. And uh, yeah, so uh, as you remember before, we have this uh, policy improvement theorem that if we improved uh, a value for some state, then we were guaranteed to uh, improve the overall uh, value of our policy right so uh, if uh, some policy pi is better for for one for one state s uh, compared to policy uh, or some uh, yeah so policy pi prime is better than policy pi for some state then we are guaranteed that it is uh, better than the, uh, the the policy pi prime is better than uh, policy pi, but in, when, uh, in function uh, approximation case, it is not uh, longer true, uh, and uh, so yeah. So uh, here, let's let me cite it. The, that the lack of policy improvement theorem is also a theoretical lacuna for the total episodic and average reward setting. So uh, we have uh, the policy improvement theorem doesn't work uh, for all this uh, kind of settings here under function approximation. And uh, yeah, so we don't have this guaranteed improvement anymore. In uh, chapter 13, uh, we will be uh, uh, familiar, familiarized with an uh, alternative class of framework reinforcement learning algorithms uh, and uh, the policy gradient uh, algorithm. And uh, there we'll have the policy gradient theorem. But uh, yeah, we will, we will get to that. OK, so uh, yeah, they state that uh, this uh, uh, getting some uh, local improvement guarantees is an open problem problem for for the approximate methods uh, in uh, reinforcement learning still here. So that's interesting and something to ha have in mind probably. Yeah, un unlike in tabular case when when we have the, that uh, kind of. Uh, local improvement guarantee, and therefore we had uh, this guarantee of uh, uh, getting the optimal policy always, uh, given uh, enough experiences. Okay, so, but, and uh, another uh, scene I wanted to mention that I still saw so uh, recently I was uh, uh, looking through the uh, Dreamer papers. I don't know if you, Mayanka, are familiar with those like uh, Dreaming for Control and uh, the second version where they use uh, this uh, uh, 
categorical uh, word models. So uh, basically this dreamer approach, it's a model-based reinforcement learning algorithm. And mm -hmm. uh, at least uh, uh, not long ago, it was a state of the art on the Atari uh, problems. And uh, obviously it uses uh, neural networks for the function approximation, right? And uh, mm -hmm. still they have a discounted formulation of, of the problem there. But uh, yeah, I think, I hope that we will get to this more kind of uh, modern uh, advanced algorithm in more details uh, sometime uh, soon. And uh, uh, yeah, but an another thing to mention that uh, both those papers cited the, this book and other works by Rich Sutton uh, number of times. So uh, all this stuff is uh, still uh, fundamental and important for modern uh, reinforcement learning stuff. Or, yeah, developments. Okay. This is just uh, like, uh, I've got a bit of track. Let's uh, wrap up this chapter today. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's consider differential semi-gradient and step sarsa. So uh, again, uh, now we, we can uh, do end step bootstrapping in differential setting as well as we did uh, for other problem formulations. And in this case, the end step returns can be defined as follows. We uh, use the N here. Uh, here you can see that we use this N uh, differences of, uh, so we take the rewards at time T plus one uh, up to T plus N and we subtract uh, this uh, average reward estimate at time step t plus n minus one n times essentially here. So for each uh, each uh, of the n rewards we sum here, we subtract the uh, average reward estimate. And uh, notice here that we subtract our current estimate of the average uh, reward, right? Not uh, the uh, average, uh, the estimate of average reward associated with that step uh, when we get the reward, right? We always subtract R sub T uh, plus N minus one. And uh, yeah, and uh, we add the uh, action value estimate for uh, the uh, st final state in this uh, n step sequence uh, s sub t plus n. And uh, again, we are uh, talking about SARSA here. So we add the action uh, selected, uh, sampled uh, uh, using our epsilon greedy approach here. And uh, yeah, so th this, uh, this we add this value of our function. So yeah. So the R bar here is an estimate of uh, uh, average reward and uh, N is greater than uh, or equal to one. And uh, the T plus N we consider uh, it uh, before the termination and, and uh, uh, after termination we uh, just uh, usually we set the expected returns to zero, right? So that's our uh, our uh, expected return at uh, terminal state is always the same as uh, expected re return at step, step T. So, okay, the, uh, then we can write n step TD error uh, in terms of this uh, expected end step return. And uh, yeah, so here the expression is, it's uh, 
uh, kind of the same. The main change is in formulation of the expected returns here in 10.14. 10 and the algorithm should be modified accordingly. Uh, now uh, you can see that we uh, iterate uh, through time steps. We ob observe and store. So as usual for uh, n step bootstrapping, we need to store the rewards uh, for the for n steps and uh, yeah, at each time step, we select an epsilon greedy action and uh, we uh, increment our tau. The tau is uh, the time, uh, time step we are, are updating. And uh, so it's kind of n steps back from now. And we need it to have at least n experiences, right, to make an update. And the update is then uh, we uh, take this sum from uh, time step tau plus one to time step tau plus n. And uh, yeah, so here you can see that uh, tau plus n would be just t plus one, right? Uh, because here is tau. Uh, and uh, then we just uh, have this sum of uh, observed uh, reward for the relevant time steps uh, minus average reward. And uh, again, we add and so, uh, we add the uh, action value estimate for time step st s tau plus n, given some action we selected and we subtract our current estimate for the updated state, the action value function, or for, for, yes, for updated action value function. And uh, again, we, we apply the same update rules to update our average reward estimate and uh, the weights. So yeah, you can see that the changes are not that big actually in average reward formulation. It's uh, kind of su surprisingly clean algorithm. Okay, and uh, mm -hmm. let's consider the final exercise in the differential semi graded and step style SARSA algorithm. Uh, the step size parameter on the average reward beta needs to be quite small so that uh, our bar becomes a good long-term estimate of the average reward. Unfortunately, our bar will then be biased by its initial value for many steps, which may make uh, learning inefficient. Uh, okay, so we are usually initializing our bar uh, at zero. So they say, for example, we initialize at zero. So we, and uh, obviously the average reward is highly dependent on the uh, on our environment on how do we uh, formulate uh, how, how do we assign the rewards in this environment and uh, zero might be arbitrarily far from the actual average reward and that will bias our estimate and that will impact uh, it uh, significantly uh, in the early learning uh, period. Uh, so uh, as the policy slowly uh, change, uh, policy slowly changed, our bar would also change. And the potential for such long-term non-stationarity makes uh, sense. Oh, so uh, what we can do to uh, uh, eliminate this bias, we can use a sample average, average uh, instead of uh, uh, kind of averaging all the observed rewards as we do here. So we, uh, we as we do here, we just uh, always update it by the error and therefore we have kind of uh, the full average. Uh, we can uh, use a sample average. Uh, Okay, but uh, we have 
we can have uh, the non-stationary pr problem. And in that case, sample average method is not a, a good choice. So uh, what we can do instead, we can, uh, we can uh, apply the correction, uh, the bias correction, uh, or here it's called the unbiased uh, constant step size trick uh, described in exercise 2.7. And uh, we need to describe the changes uh, needed to um, be made, made to this algorithm. So let's quickly check the exercise 2.7. Uh, exercise 2.7. Okay, so the unbiased uh, value here uh, would be, so uh, we uh, divide it uh, by uh, the this O sub N bar uh, value and this O sub N bar value depends on our uh, alpha here uh, and uh, multiplied uh, by, so we kind of uh, have this, uh, it's called the le uh, yeah, linear combination of our uh, learning rate here and uh, and one essentially, right? Uh, you can view it as a linear combination. Uh, and uh, so, so we de-bias, de by, de by dividing by this O bar, uh, we de-bias our, uh, so here we were de-biasing a step size, uh, but in uh, yeah, in that case, we we will be debiasing the step size for uh, aver average reward, and uh, yeah, that can be done in the same in the same way. So we start with zero here, and uh, if you substitute it, uh, you will get uh, alpha divi divided by alpha. And uh, what uh, will it give us? So it will be one, right? And at the first time step, we just will assign our uh, observed value to be the current uh, estimate of the average. And that is why uh, we are just eliminating this uh, uh, bias. So, uh, Again, let's uh, go back to this problem we had. Uh, okay, let me find it quickly. Uh, it was just before summary. Okay, so here we update our R bar uh, with some uh, with uh, error associated with current uh, observed reward. Right, and uh, we multiplied it, multiplied it by beta. So let's say uh, beta is uh, 0 0.1, and we start with zero here. So whatever value we will have, our, we will uh, assign our estimate to be kind of 0 0.1 of the actual error we have. But uh, we don't want that in the very beginning because uh, because our initial value here can be arbitrarily far uh, from the true value. And we don't want to kind of uh, rely on it much. And by uh, doing that correction, as we saw, uh, we will just have, uh, at, the, at the very first time step, we will have uh, a one here instead of uh, our actual beta. And as we, uh, Proceed further. The uh, the actual uh, un, uh, this corrected uh, learning rate will approach the value of uh, beta we select we selected, and uh, that is why it will uh, it will have uh, uh, like both. Uh, uh, it will it is good because we uh, kind of upda always update our average reward estimate, but also we eliminate this initial bias by uh, kind of uh, 
setting our uh, initial updates uh, less, less dependent on beta in the very beginning. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, uh, that, that is very common trick used in statistics. And uh, if, if uh, uh, my maybe explanation in words did not make much sense, uh, you can uh, look it up in uh, like bias correction in statistics. And uh, yeah, that, that's a really very common scene. And uh, uh, it, it, is, uh, it should be easy to uh, understand uh, when you look at the formulas. Cool. Okay, so I think that we are done with this chapter and uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, see you next week for the off policy methods with the approximation. Yep. Uh, thanks. Uh, cheers. Yeah. Uh, yes. See you guys. Everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye guys. Take care.